I am mad as hell. And I don't know who to be mad at. But uh, about a month, month and a half ago, I heard about the starfish die-off taking place in British Columbia. It was on the news that divers had discovered that starfish were dying in large numbers off Vancouver and uh, around Vancouver Island. Now, since then, it turns out that this disease that is killing the starfish in mass is happening from as far north as Alaska all the way to Southern California. The starfish, the sea stars are dying off and science doesn't know what is making this happen. The starfish lose their arms. They get these lesions, they lose their arms and then essentially turn into goo. Goo! It's, it's uh, like, it leaves me speechless because uh, Cindy and I have been down to the Oregon, Washington coast numerous times. As a matter of fact, even along the British Columbia coast we have filmed starfish. And we filmed all the creatures that depend on starfish. I mean, for us, it's a beautiful thing to go and see, you know, when the tide is out and you can see them cling to the rocks. But for some creatures, it is part of their diet. And that includes everything from seagulls to, as Cindy uh, found out while researching on uh, Google, that even uh, nurse sharks and Alaska king crab eat starfish. But here's the thing that's really annoying me and why I'm really upset. We humans haven't been on the planet for that long. And our industrial technological age is even newer than that. Maybe a couple of hundred years. And in this 200 years, we have come to the point where we're destroying the planet with no regard for anything. I mean, you think about the Pacific Ocean and how many of the biggest cities in the world are on the coast. And how these cities so often use the Pacific Ocean for their sewage and waste dispo disposal. It's getting dumped in the ocean by hundreds of millions of people that produce this waste and garbage. So are we surprised that there's mysterious viruses, diseases or other things coming along killing the starfish? I sure as the heck am not. I'm surprised it hasn't happened earlier. But it really pisses me off, to be quite blunt about it. We can't afford to do this. We can't afford to lose the species. We can't afford to lose the oceans. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't have the answers for what's causing this. I mean, for all we know, it could be natural. But it could also be things, everything from Fukushima's radiation. And there's so much radiation going into the Pacific Ocean on a daily basis that even tuna caught between California and Hawaii have been found to contain radiation. So you think about it, how many different species interact, the food chain in the ocean. It's a disaster that's taking place right now. And uh, we can't afford it. I mean, we can't turn to our kids and say, well, you know, we had a good run on this planet Earth, but man, we're going to leave this mess for you and uh, if you make it good for you and if you don't well too bad the tide today was seven or three i think so um yeah at six o'clock would have been perfect yeah do you ever get any octopus or anything else found we in here do occasionally um in 10 years that i've worked here i have yet to see one okay. um i have co-workers that have witnessed them but it's pretty rare so how high does the water run? Vertical line generally is your high tide mark. Okay. So how much time do we have to stay? Now that's a whole different realm because everything depends on what's happening out there. So there are going to be days where it takes forever for it to come in. And then, for instance, right now, we've got really nice surging. This could fill up in the next 45 minutes. It could take... 15 or it could take two hours to get all the way up to the cobbles. It just varies. Everything is so unpredictable. <laughs> I mean, we can give you an average. Uh, right now, you have at least a half an hour. What are these things that look like green fluffy donuts? These are anemones. They're a soft-bodied animal and they're opportunistic feeders, which means that whatever is going to get trapped in their tentacles, um, then they have a neurotoxin on each tentacle 
that sting a fish or crab and then they into its mouth, which if you can see clearly here, mm -hmm. kind of looks like a little belly button. That's its mouth and also its anus. So food comes in, processed, and then it's expelled out once the nutrients are absorbed. It's amazing. What else would we expect to see besides the sea stars and the anemones? And um, the you might be able to find the crabs. Nice crabs right there. Ah, <laughs> um, this guy, it's a little periwinkle. Um, you can try looking for sea slugs, which um, really? here are really pretty. They some of their bodies into strange, chaining shapes. Um, and that's just because they're soft bodied and water is, you know, following the route of gravity. The other thing are chitons, which are kind of like snails. And there are these guys right here. And chitons have eight overlapping plates. So there's two varieties here. Here's another one. So this is the leather or the cage. So they scrape off diatoms and algae with a really sharp tongue. They look prehistoric. They do. And then when they become detached, they roll up like a roly poly to protect that soft underside. Have you noticed any tsunami debris washing up yet? We have tsunami debris. Um, our, it'd be in areas such as Crescent Beach, a little bit further yeah. north or a little bit further south. Anywhere there's protected coves, we'll get debris. Occasionally we get debris washed in the tide right. pools, but we haven't seen a dramatic influx of it. That's excellent. Hope. Yeah, hope, oh, yeah. Is it there is so much diversity of life in the ocean, so much beauty, and that even in the colder waters. And I love coming to the ocean. I love checking the tidal pools. I mean, I'm up there in years, but I still love it. I still love seeing things. Now imagine the kids. And imagine that the day might come when they're not going to be able to see anything. Yeah, someone explained to me once that when the tide goes out, it's sort of like they take their last breath. They do. The water. They hold it in. So they say, don't touch them because it's sort of like give up <laughs> and letting that breath out. And then exactly. They'll be dry. You'll see children. <laughs> so. Yeah, safe touching, especially these guys for aquariums. But our sea stars, they're not harmed by it as long as somebody doesn't try to tie them off the rock. These guys can live to be about 30, 35 years, this particular species. And they get quite large. It's amazing. Plus, part of their adaptation, we were talking about how the anemones hold in. They do too. They bring in water right. and they hold it, and you can tell. Where gravity has shifted the water from the upper extremities right. into the Same. lower, so they're more bloated here. <laughs> that makes sense. Are they? You know, when you see the starfish hang onto the rocks like that, you think that they just got these little suckers on their bottom that they grab a hold with. But Cindy actually filmed some that were starting to detach from the rocks, and I don't know why they were detaching. But man, their feelers can be really long. It's beautiful coming to the sea. I mean, the smell of the salty air, the mist in the air, the sound of seagulls and other seabirds. I mean, it is absolutely an amazing thing, and life depends on it. All these big cities around the world that are on the coast, you know how many people depend on uh, food from the ocean for their major protein supply? And yet we use the ocean for sewer and waste disposal. Can you imagine if, if you stored your bodily waste in your fridge or on your stove? It's ridiculous. And yet that's what's happening. And the governments don't have the where at all, the uh, inspiration, energy, whatever it takes to put an end to it. Because, well, it might cost more money. really ticked off and even here in British Columbia I mean we keep hearing about Canada being an energy uh, superpower and we're going to create more coal terminals and uh, oil terminals for shipping coal and oil to Asia I mean look at the air in Asia and that carbon doesn't stay in the air it gets up in the jet stream it mixes with rain falls into the oceans making them acidy I mean get a grip
It's just so like it's really small. Okay. And it's it's like but it's kind right of... on the wall, right on the rock above that starfish, eh? Because I can probably get in there with my camera. Yeah, it's like. Okay, come and look at my camera here and see if you see it. Okay. I'll find it out. <laughs> Maybe we'll find it that way. Yeah. That's okay. A good idea. So there's All right, starfish so there's in the water. There's a starfish. So zoom in on that. I thought it was a sea lemon though. All of the sea anemones in there are those uh, really pretty ones, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. What are those called again? Nice. The green ones, these are giant green sea anemones. Right. And then the smaller ones that are kind of taking over this rock, yep. they're called, or this one, they're called aggregating anemones. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for trying anyway. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, oh, that's okay. If half the effort was put into getting clean, renewable energy as is being put into maintaining this carbon intensive earth destroying fossil fuel industry would be on the way to having clean energy in the 60s the united states put a challenge between scientists let's put a man on the move moon and in less than a decade it was done it could be done the only thing is that there's a big push to prevent clean renewable energy and guess who is fighting it tooth and nail out and they're quite see. brightly colored then too, are they? Or? Yeah, 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 they usually are. There's also another type of sea slug that eats this purple sponge right here that's called a sea leopard. Oh, and yes. it has spots just like a leopard does. Oh, kidding. I am mad as hell. I don't want to see this planet destroyed. I probably won't because I won't be around, but my Kids or grandkids could very well see this. And at least I want to be on the record as saying that I tried something. Even if it was just shooting off my mouth, I tried something. I tried to bring attention to what's happening. I didn't just stick my head in the sand, pretend all is right, all is well. I hope you also care about planet Earth. This is our home. It doesn't matter what science finds a hundred, two hundred, three hundred light years away, you know, oh, there's all these millions and billions of inhabitable planets. It's nothing new. Carl Sagan back in the 70s was saying the same thing. It's all out there, but it doesn't do us any good. This is where we live. We're not going to create a mega spaceship and send a small team of people out to explore and start new colonies on different planets at least not in the foreseeable future and if we don't take care of this planet not ever so i hope you care i hope you appreciate the beauty not just in the riviera maya or in uh florida keys or wherever enjoy appreciate the beauty and realize that every one of us has to take an effort to make sure that it's around for generations to come you come down here to Cannon Beach and you're going to see families out there with kids. I hope that those kids will be able to bring their, their kids back to the same beaches to show them all the magic, all the beauty that they found. And I am really doubtful at the present way that things are going if that's going to be possible. Unless we all take a stand. Thank you.
Step on the sand, you're fine. Oh. oh my gosh, guys. Yeah, it's really good. It's got a little barn with the stuff on the shelf. 